How we doing, Pure Heart family? We doing all right? Awesome. Well, my name is Chris Moore. I'm the youth and college pastor here at Pure Heart. I have the privilege of serving here, and it's such an honor. I want to welcome everybody who joined us for this service here, and I want to welcome all those joining us online, including our Crossroads Recovery family. Let's give it up for Crossroads. We believe in God for your healing and restoration. You're not in this alone. We're in this together. Man, 2019 is going to be an amazing, special year. I look at some of the new things coming up in 2019. Did you see our church was given a campus? A whole building. And we want to pray and dedicate this facility in use to God. So please show up for our prayer day. Like that thing is going to be awesome. Also 2019, we're starting a new event for our junior high and high school students called Heart Conference. Everybody say Heart Conference. Now this event, our dream is to bring some of the most influential speakers in youth culture here to our church to see our students inspired and equipped. And the whole church said, amen. We're so excited about this event. And if you sign up by January 15th, you'll be entered to win a free spot to summer camp. And all those who love saving said, amen. 2019 is going to be an amazing special year. My amazing bride is here somewhere. I don't know where she is, but she is pregnant with my first child. We had an, a doctor's appointment this week, and the doctor said, this baby's coming in a week, a little more or a little less. So, but, but her name, we came up with a name. Her name is Madsen, but her nickname, I'm praying, is going to be Daddy's Little Tax Break. <laughs> Let's pray for a December 31st, 1159 p.m. birth. Come on, church. I'm, ah, oh, I just, like, if it's not here, I'm going to be yelling, push! Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, December 31st, baby, come on, come on, join me in prayer and pray for me. But man, I've been thinking, now that I'm about to have a child, I've been thinking about generations. I've been thinking about what am I going to give my, ch- my daughter, what, it's, what is she going to give her kids, what am I going to leave on this planet that la- outlasts me? I've been thinking about in- generational impact, my family line, and I've been thinking 2019, I've been thinking about this year differently than other years. You know, I, I've been thinking about some things that I, I need to start and some things that need to stop this year. So, uh, in, in, when I was in the second grade, I had this teacher. She kayaked a granola, and you could see her armpit hair when she wore a t-shirt. <laughs> this is the type of teacher she was. And we had this thing called Heritage Month. Anybody do Heritage Month where everybody came in and, and, and showed off where they were from? Now, a little backstory about me. I was raised by my grandparents. Mom and dad weren't at home. And so I was raised by my grandma, my grandpa, and MTV. This is how I was raised. So my grandma, though, was a hippie. Just like she's an acupuncturist. She is a, as hippie as all hippie get out. Let me, give you, let me tell you, I grew up eating kale. Just grew up eating it. And then they, I would drink things like hemp milk. Do you know you can milk hemp? Do you know that this is a real thing? I grew up, like, this is, and I grew up not eating gluten. You know, I, I basically think my childhood was like child abuse. So, you know, I, I grew up in this context. So, you know, when it came time for Heritage Month, who showed up for Heritage Month? My grandma. My nana. Now, let me tell you, she, her background, her heritage comes from a migrating group of people called gypsies. (laughs) So you could imagine what happened in my second grade class. In fact, this is what she does. She walks the corner of the room, puts in a CD. Y'all remember CDs? She puts in a CD and hits play for this song. She was a gypsy woman. I'm not kidding. And then she has everyone doing a line dance. And she's in the front doing this. My, I was in second grade. You know what this does to a second grader's reputation? You know how, you know how this humiliated me and devastated me? This is a completely true story. None of this is made up or dr- dramatized for effect. This is a true story. I came home from second grade this day. I came home and I saw her and I said, Nana! Why did you do that to me? Jose's parents brought quesadillas. Why'd you do this? 
And as I've been thinking about the future, I've just thought, man, there's some things that have to continue on, and there are some things that are going to have to die with me. <laughs> Done. Done. So with this concept in mind, let's pray. God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that it is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. I pray your word goes out, cuts our hearts, and speaks to us deep, deeply. And God, I pray my words fall flat. And you do what only you can do in this place and heal and restore lives. I thank you, Father, and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. My, 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 my sermon is simply titled today, The War for Peace. We're going to be talking about and doing a little character study about this man named David. Everybody say David. See, David had a son, and his son was named Solomon. Everybody say Solomon. We're going to be talking about David, Solomon, and another son that David had. So as we kind of look through God's word, I, I want to give you some character study of David. See, David was known for killing a mighty giant named Goliath he, with a sling. So David killed Goliath. David was a lyrical poet. Like he wrote many of the poets, mo many of the poems in the book of Psalms. He was famously known for writing very popular music at the time. Israel top, Billboard Top 100 music, he was always on that list. Every camel was bumping his tunes. David was a well-known poet. He was a well-known musician. And he led a thriving economy. Even so much, the economy, I would say, it was thriving so much, even the falafel house was staffed with competent employees. See, David led, led just this nation of Israel into so much prominence, into so much power. He had this strategic mind, and he won battles and wars, and he was, he was known actually as, in Scripture, he's described as this, a man after God's own heart. Today we're going to be looking at the, at the consummation of his son, uh, Solomon. See, Solomon's story begins before he's even born, many like our stories. Solomon's story begins before he's ever born, and it starts here in 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. It says, in the springtime of the year, the season when most kings took their soldiers out to fight. Let's read that together. In the springtime of the, season, of the year, the season when... Okay, so when most kings take their soldiers out to fight... Let me read this, then I want you to read this next line. What did David do? David, David stayed. Let's read that. Let's, let's, let's think this one more time. In the spring when kings go to war, David, David stayed. David stayed. See, he sent out his, he sent out his generals, and I'm going to paraphrase this next scripture, but the context is all the men are out to war, and David is here at his palace. Now imagine this palace is like a high-rise building, and he walks out. The scripture says he walks out one night, and he sees into another apartment, and he sees a woman. And the scripture actually says he sees this. It says, from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. See, David likes what he sees, and he tells one of his associates, tell me who this woman is, figure out who she is. So his assistant does what all of us do, and he gets on Facebook to stalk her. Looks all over Facebook, tries to find pictures, everything. Finds out that she has an Instagram, at bath underscore Sheba. Bath, at bath Sheba. This is what her bio says on her Instagram. It says, uh, it, it says she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So she's a married woman. And then David sends his messengers to her. He sends a DM, and she comes to him, and he sleeps with her. And this is some Jerry Springer stuff happens. She gets pregnant in this affair. And now David is a cheater. He's in an affair. And not only is he in an affair, but then he tries to cover it up. So he spends the next, this whole chapter describing the cover-up. In this chapter, David has her husband killed. So he's a cheater and a murderer. This great king known for so many mighty things known as being a, a, God, a man after God's own heart. And in, in chapter 12, the next chapter of the Bible describes how he repents and how David and Bathsheba go through this painful loss of this child that they conceive through this affair. And then all of a sudden they have another son, and this son is named Solomon. And they, this is very significant. Solomon's name means peace. And this is very, very important. We're going to come back to this. Solomon's name is peace. Now Solomon, his, his floor was his father's ceiling. Basically, all the things that David built, Solomon built upon. So like the, the economy 
was at one of the highest times in the history of the earth. They say Solomon was worth like $2.1 trillion. That's a lot of money. He was worth a lot of money. He, he built this thriving economy. He was known as the wisest person who ever lived. He wrote many of the chapters of the books of Proverbs. Uh, and, but he had this one thing. The wisest man had this one thing that made him seem so stupid. The wisest man did this one thing that made him seem so dumb. And, and, and the same thing that was in his dad was in him. Now, before we talk about this one thing, I've got a question. How many married people in the house? Where are my married people at? Woo! We've got some happily married people. Where are my, where are the single people? Where are the single people? Like, really single. Like, you're not kind of single. You're very single. Like, how many people, where are the mingle people at? Woo! Some people saying still out. Okay. Me and Brush Fire afterwards. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But you're welcome. Uh, See, marriage isn't easy. That's one thing I know about marriage. Marriage. I've been married for six years now, and, uh, and I, that, I say that to say I don't know that much, but I know something. But what I do know is that marriage isn't easy. Now, now Solomon had 700 wives. The wisest man on the planet sounds very dumb. Like, the wisest man on the planet had 700 wives and 300 women on the side. He had a thousand women in his life. Could you imagine 700 to-do lists? I, I have enough, t- uh, enough hard time doing one. See, he, uh, he was married 700 times. And you can almost say that the same struggle that Solomon had, his father had. But you could almost say it almost seems like it was multiplied. That in his blood, there was this struggle. That inside of him, he had this genetic predisposition towards having a problem with the ladies. See, if you're in here today, all of us have a genetic predisposition. All of us have this bent. All of us have a gypsy line dance that we wish we could get rid of. All of us have been given something in this world through genetics that maybe we, you didn't have a choice in. Maybe today it's addiction. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's something like lying or stealing or, or anger or stress or depression or anxiety. If your parents had it, there's a chance that you do too. And David even wrote this in Psalms. He said, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. None of us are excused from this idea and this concept. All of us have had stuff handed to us. And all of us are, have a struggle in this world. For Solomon, it was lust. And his parents were this an adulterous affair. And fast forward to the end of Solomon's life. We know this. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of his father David had been. See, David's sin seems like it's passed down and multiplied even. Which leads me to believe this thought. What we do today has an impact beyond what we can see. And, and, and let me say it like this, 20 in, 2018 will have an impact on 2075. That what you're doing today, the decisions you're making today, what you decide to do, what you decide not to do, has an impact for generations to come. And wh- so what are you going to do with this impact? Who are you going to impact in this world? Family, strangers, coworkers, children. Maybe you're here and you're, you're not going to be a dad like me, so you're not thinking about kids. But what are you going to leave? What are you going to leave this world with? See, 2019 is going to be an awesome new year. And I keep thinking, man, what are we going to leave in 2019? Because there's this fight that all of us have to fight. See, when I, was the, when I was the ample age of nine, I had a very defining moment in my life happen. And I've told pieces of my journey here. I talked about how I was raised by my grandparents, how I'm a hood rat, how my, my grandma was, my, my mom wasn't around, my dad wasn't around. But I haven't really talked much about my mom. This, this last year I was able to share a service about how my relationship with my dad and for finding forgiveness and how God's brought a lot of healing to me. But today I want to talk about a relationship I have with my mom. See, when I was nine years old, up until I was nine years old, my siblings lived 15 minutes away. I had three siblings all from different dads at my mom's house. We used to do birthdays and Christmas and big events together. We spent a lot of our life together. And then when I turned nine, they moved away. And when they moved away, there was no goodbye. There were no more happy birthdays, no Merry Christmases, no I love yous, 
you know, congratulations. And she didn't come back into my life until I was an adult. And so there had been this hurt and this pain that I had to heal from for so long. And I, I, I want to give, give you this backstory, and I want to tell you a, a funny story, and you can laugh at me. It sounds very serious, and like I'm about to be emotional, but it's actually really funny, so it's okay to laugh. My life sometimes feels like comedy. You guys ever feel like your life feels like comedy, like, like it's the Truman Show, and somebody's laughing at you, but you don't know. You, there's got to be a camera somewhere. So my wife sends me to pick up her prenatal vitamins, my wife's name is Connor, so she has a boy's name. So it looks like a guy's picking up pregnancy pills. And every time the pharmacist looks at me like, hmm, okay. And recently my wife and I decided we were going to do something just kind of out of the ordinary, kind of make a change. We wanted to really invest in our marriage. So we went and saw a counselor, which, by the way, after doing it, I think everyone should do it. I think, if you, I think if you've been married for any amount of time, there's always conversations that are hard to have. And you know what? It helped us so much. If you're going through something, find people. Go, don't do life alone. It was one of the best things we ever did. So we went and saw this counselor. Now, my story, this counselor had been meeting with my wife for a while. So she knew some of my story already, you know, that I struggle with abandonment and all these different things that came from my past. And so, I, like, she knows some of the things I'm struggling with. And then all of a sudden, I'm not kidding, not making this story up. Listen to this. I'm not kidding. She walks in the room, the counselor, and she looks exactly like my biological mother who abandoned me when I was nine. My counselor, who I'm about to bear my heart to, looks like my mom. I look at her and I go, Mom. I, and then about 20 seconds later, I finally got over it. But I, I re, it got me thinking about this relationship with I, I have with my mom. See, I turned 28 December 9th, just a few weeks ago. If you missed my birthday, that's all right. I'm still accepting diapers. <laughs> so I turned 28 just a few weeks ago. And on my birthday, I didn't get any contact from my mom. I didn't get a text message. Didn't get, she didn't even write on my Facebook wall. Like, my mom did, was completely MIA on my birthday. And in the past, it just never bothered me. And it actually didn't even bother me when I, when I noticed. But what it did bother me was I just saw it and I said, you know what? I don't think I can let, give this to my daughter. In fact, I don't think my daughter should ever go a birthday without knowing that I love her. I, I, this idea of just being comfortable and being okay with not knowing my family, this can't continue. This has to stop. So I said, you know what? This ends right here with me. And I just had to fight. I, I've looked into this, and now I have something worth fighting for. I have a fight to fight. And I, and I know that this next year, some of us have some fights to fight. And, and, and I, I want to talk about this, this fight that David had with lust. See, the fight doesn't start when he saw her. The fight doesn't start when he sends her a message. The fight doesn't start for when she comes to his house. The fight starts right here in verse 11. It says this, In the springtime, when most kings go to war, what did David do? David stayed. stayed. You understand this? It all, it's all a setup. That David, if he goes to war... His son then has peace. I want to bring this concept that maybe Solomon never had peace in this area of his life because his father never went to war. That war is a part of, of, this, of, this, of this battle. That we all have a battle to fight. There are, and there are seasons that require us to go to war. We can't just sit back and hope that someday things will be different. And I just felt like God just put this word in this little hood rat in the backwoods of Montana to say that 2019, there are some things God wants to do that are motion activated, that take you not just staying, but saying, you know what, I've got to make a change. I've got to fight this fight. I've got someone worth fighting for, and I've got to fight this fight. See, this year, there's a fight for your purpose. There's a fight in addiction Lust, lying, stealing, anger, stress, depression. See, David's son didn't have peace because he didn't go to war. And you want peace for your family. You want peace for the future. 
there's a war. And I just, I felt like God wanted me to give some encouragement. Maybe you showed up here and you've been fighting for a long time. You've been praying for that son. You've been praying for that daughter. You've been praying for that husband. You've been praying and you've been fighting. I feel like God put on my heart to say, don't give up. Don't quit. Because if you don't quit in due season, you will reap a harvest. Amen? Don't give up. Do you know there's power in a praying mom? Did you know you actually have power? Do you know there's power in a grandma and a grandpa who has faith? And there's power in a dad who has love and grace and mercy and just prayer. There is power in you. And there's power. Don't grow weary in doing good. See, there is power in this. But, and I've been thinking about this concept. How do we fight this fight? Because if I could have stopped some of these things, if my family, if, like I can think about how many times, like I just need some more strength. I need something bigger than myself. I, I heard this story about someone who got a DNA kit. You seen these things? These ancestry kits, you seen these? Like they're on sale. They'll tell you you're related to someone in Canada. You ever seen these things? These things are, these things are out there. So there's this story about this guy who got his ancestry DNA kit. And he found out in his family line there was incest, alcoholics, murderers, liars, cheats, prostitutes, drunks, multiple affairs, and all ending in an unplanned teen pregnancy from a virgin named Mary. Matthew chapter 1 says this, this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David. The son of who? The son of David. So this means that Jesus had all the same genetic predispositions, all the same bents as Solomon. David had, or Jesus had all the same things that Solomon did, yet he didn't sin, which means this is where our hope is. This is where our power comes from. This is where our strength comes from, that Jesus had all the same things as us, yet he didn't. So maybe your dad had anger problems. Maybe there's severe mental illness. Maybe your grandpa was a womanizer. Or maybe your mother was never present. The hope of the gospel is that biology doesn't determine destiny. The good news is no matter what you've walked in here with, your biology, what you've been given, does not have to determine where you're going. The hope today is that you have a personal relationship with God. Did you know the Bible describes our relationship with God as Father? And you know, Father isn't Grandpa. You can't go through someone else. He's not God our Grandpa. He's God our Father. Because it's a personal, deep connection with God that we have. We all have to have this personal connection with God. And this, I believe, 2019 is going to be a year of warring, fighting, and winning. Because we fight from victory. We fight from strength. Tonight, or today, I wanted to take a moment and sing this song. This song is so incredibly simple. It says, it might look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. And I just think 2019 is going to be a year of fight. And I think it's going to take faith. It's going to take encouragement. It's going to take God-sized strength to fight this year. And I wanted to take a moment of declaration and just have us say, man, 2019, we're going to fight this fight for our kids, for the future. We're going to fight this. So I'm going to pray, I'm going to count to three, and if today you're saying, man, I want to fight this fight, I'm going to ask you with full faith when I get to three to stand to your feet. So I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this word today. I pray that we would all be encouraged, that we would all be strengthened, that God, we would feel this call to fight this fight. One, maybe you've been given something in this life and you want it to end with you. Two, you know you've got some people worth fighting for. Three, if that's you, could you stand to your feet? And can we sing this song? Thank you, thank you, all across this room, full of faith. Let's sing this out. This is how I fight my battles. 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 
to sing. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Let's sing it full thing. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. seated for a moment. See, biology doesn't determine your destiny. You have generational impact through your choices, which leads me to my action step. And it was inspired as I did some study of this relationship between David and Solomon. And in this story, there's a woman named Bathsheba, who was Solomon's mother and part of the affair. And there's a lot of study done about her. And as I kind of researched more and found out what some scholars say, there's actually a portion of the Bible that they believe came from Bathsheba that was wrote by her. And it comes in Proverbs chapter 31. And it starts out by this. It starts out by saying, These are the, say the saying King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. King Lemuel, that's not Solomon's name. It was actually a name described of Solomon. So most scholars believe this was wrote by her. Which, even if it wasn't, this, at minimum, this was a, a letter from a mother to a son. But this is what they believe she wrote. They believe she wrote this. Listen, my son. Listen, the son of my womb. Listen, the, my son, the answer to my prayers. Well, she's basically saying, listen, I birthed you. You better listen. And then she continues on and she says this. And I imagine her, a woman whose life had been destroyed by an affair writing this. She writes this, do not spend your strength on women. Your vigor are those who ruin king. Do you understand, she says, the woman whose life had essentially gone to shambles because of this. I imagine her with tears saying this to her son, saying your father's sin doesn't have to be yours. You don't have to do the same thing your family's always done. You can get out of this. And we know Solomon's story didn't end well, but Jesus's did, which is why we have hope. So today, I, I just, I knew there are so many action steps in this room. 2019, what has to stop? Was your dad an alcoholic? And you just know you, you can't mess with it, and you have been? Or maybe you have some addiction, and you just know you've got to end it this year. Or maybe 2019 is, you know, there's so many things you've been given. Maybe it's the way you handle your finances. Whatever it is. And all of us have an action step here. But today, I, 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 had, a, I had a very direct one I knew that I had to do. I wrote my daughter a letter. And today I want to read it. Madsen, my beautiful girl, I want you to know I will be present for you. Put me down for recitals and games. Count me in for your graduations and birthdays. You will never go a birthday 
without knowing your Father loves you. You don't have to strive to get my attention. I'm forever proud of you. I don't know what food you like or what you think is funny, but I know you will look familiar, and I know you will have some of the same struggles in this world. But hold tight to Jesus. We'll fight for you. But remember, the fight has already been won by our Savior. Hold tight to Jesus. Love your dad. And I wrote this. In the season of resolutions, and you have the greatest solution. In the season of writing and times, take a moment. If you're a dad or a mom, I encourage you to do something like this. If you're not, and you know you've got an action step, some things have got to end or some things have got to start for you to go forward. And take a step. Be bold this year. Have faith. 2019 is going to be an amazing new year. Amen. So today I, I want to pray for a couple people in particular. Maybe you came here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You've never been a Christian. You want to follow God. You don't want to sign up for an organization or a club, but you want to have faith in this God. You want to have a relationship with God. Today, if that's you, with every eye closed, and every head bowed, just for a moment, and we just do this in this room as a sign of faith, you'd say, today I want to put my faith in Jesus. Could you just raise your hand? You'd say, that's me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I felt like there was some really direct words for people. You just had something inside of you. It's like, it's like God's been speaking into you, and you know you're headed down a path. Maybe you're headed down a path towards having an affair. Maybe it's a website or an email or something like that. I feel like God wanted to pause you for a moment and say, you don't know the pain this is going to cause your family. God wants to speak into you and give you strength to come out. Also, maybe you're here and you've been drinking or you've been having alcohol be a part of your life and you know it's not something you should be messing with because of your family's history. I encourage you, run. Sin will always cost you more than you ever wanted to pay, keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay. Sin will always cost you. So today, with all of these things, I pray that you have an action step. God, I pray for every person in here that we'd all have our action step, our next thing that we know we've got to have faith to do. God, I pray that we end things with us and we start some new things. God, I pray for faith in this year. I thank you that 2019 is going to be an amazing year. God, I'm so thankful for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. And may this baby be born tomorrow in Jesus' name. And everyone set.